Hello, and today I'm going to show you the next part of our application development cycle, um, our best practices, and uh, one of the most important uh, feature it is lazy loading. So first of all, what is why we need to implement it? And uh, it is probably very widespread problem that if you turn on your network tab and go to I would say 80% of sites that you are visiting you will see how much code you need to download initially it's megabytes but I have my own example of my own mistakes and it's probably I will show you on the project that uh, we developed it and this is our mistakes so this is a newspaper. I'm now in uh, author panel. When the reader comes, what he is interested in is just reading articles. Most, I would say 90% of uh, size of application is hidden behind authentication. So we have like three type of profile, manager, author, and author can create articles, can rank them, etc. A reader doesn't need 90% of the code, but if you didn't plan your application development properly, if you do not foresee since the beginning this issue, it would be very hard to keep them separately. And uh, it's an Angular application, as you know, Angular is very hard to, Angular 1, I mean, to make it modular. When you just install with Bower and import it, it's called it a global design partner. In contrast to a modular system like we have now in React. If you take a look on network panel and reload the page, uh, I don't want to because it, it will take time, and you can see that this is my vendor CSS, it's almost 84 kilobytes. And that's a famous uh, advertisement, we didn't count it, and here we have half megabyte of uh, lib folder, this is vendor's JavaScript. And 90% uh, of this weight is coming, like I said, through the authentication interface, which is not related to readers. But readers have to, especially if they come via uh, their mobile device, they have to download it first. With React, it's possible to alleviate this problem in two different ways. One of them server side rendering. It plays its main function. It is uh, excellent for SEO and crawlers. And uh, like I showed many times, crawlers without executing JavaScript code, they will see the content. Another, I would say, their uh, secondary function that they are useful for, they increase so called perceived uh, uh, user experience, perceived performance. It means that users see the content but until all the client side code is downloaded he cannot interact so if i start to load and let's assume that uh, this is like giant application and i need to download 10 megabytes before i can interact with application so if i click on the time and about nothing would happen because react has not yet been downloaded to client application, um, uh, put his event listeners. In this case, I would be interested to do the following. Let's assume that we want in our about page implement uh, something really heavy. Usually it is and uh, probably will be like auth or authentication. I will show how it works that if I turn on my network tab, and reload it. So it, it is loading and uh, it's actually because it's a YouTube. Let's go to contact page and I reload and we can see that uh, this is just JavaScript network requests. Uh, you can see that uh, app.js, this is a file and it takes and it is, it is developed and it contains all the hot modular replacement, source map, etc. And I will show how much it, it weight on, uh, on production. But then if I click on about, you can see that 
this is 1.1 JS is loaded asynchronously or lazy loaded. I don't have this 1.1 JS when I initially load any other page. And this is just uh, 3.5 kilobytes, but if I go here and suppose I uncomment good package and the moment and let's uh, I guess I, I have it just like that. And I just uncomment that. Okay, and uh, if we now repeat our cycle, so we have our application contact form for a lot uh, to clear it up and when I click on about you can see that I still asynchronously loaded this chunk but now it's uh, pretty heavy but size of our main code is stable and this is something uh, it's something with a uh, moment and this is uh, edge case this is connected to the pack but um, let's just foresee these errors and they do not relate it to our topic uh, I just want to have something heavy in order to show the usefulness of this functionality so how did I do this if you try to find uh, with ES6 uh, it's very hard to find a solution for this but well I spent it three days <laughs> and uh, now it's a moment of truth you can you can have it for free we will uh, like I said we switch it from task runners gulp to our webpack and here's where the pack is showing the reason of its usage the pack if anywhere in your code you have and I have it here anywhere in your code you have require ensure and it has a special syntaxes uh, the syntax is, is array and it is still possible inside of this array provide the um, uh, component that uh, the file that you want to request asynchronously it still uh, will be handled by uh, the pack it's automatically even if you leave an empty array and here uh, this is a callback function and this callback function has injected parameter this is just normal require and then you run it with uh, callback and this function so first of all requiring true allows you asynchronously to load files but uh, it's not by itself so when you build your code where we have the pack and you have in your config chunk you know what it does it automatically it's not necessarily I'm sorry it's not necessarily even to have a chunk plugin it does it automatically so whenever it builds its code and uh, whenever it tries to resolve your dependency when it sees uh, this uh, require ensure it create a separate file and in order to show you I would like just to create a build and uh, when I, I will rebuild it I will show now it's still amazing it will create uh, it's from my previous one it will not be changed but you can see that it created automatically uh, this separate chunk there's a small issue if you have uh, isomorphic application like we do uh, because in isomorphic application your code is not built it's not processed by the pack and server runs it uh, in a normal way when you in your application render it to string server just goes and uh, resolve your requires uh, when you see this require ensure it, it, it just uh, spit an error that require ensure is not a function it, it took a while for me to figure out because if we are on server we don't need to have this uh, asynchronous 
it just have, have to be required. And uh, I experimented with Windows Globals, but it wasn't successful. So the best way is to check type of require ensure. If it is function, it means that we are on the client or another way we are built with Webpack. It means that uh, I'm going just to use require ensure. If on the other hand, I'm on server, this require ensure its type of is not a function, it's undefined. So I will go here and here I run callback in, in normal way. And uh, this function, uh, I export it and inside my roads, inside my roads, instead of uh, in, in road hierarchy, instead of component, I have this function, I replace it with get component function. And uh, this is the function, and I will split it on server line in order to increase readability. I will show this is like fat arrow function, and I have location and callback. And this location is callback is it will be managed by React Road. And then when inside body of this function, I will use require. It means that uh, it will require roads about, and uh, I created a separate folder for roads about. And you can see that here I, I have index. It allows me not to specify this file. It's optional because by default, it will search for index.js and it finds it. And when I open it, here I have this asynchronous on client and synchronous on server and uh, yeah everything everything works and uh, and then inside of this component i have normal component with es6 syntaxes and i have all this beautiful stuff uh, from es6 2015 if I want to, because probably uh, like it happened that you have one branch of your application, for example, like below components, it will be responsible for about, it will contain code that is not needed by most of the application that is heavy and uh, it's a key to the great user experience. And you know that Google measures initial load time and if you have 10 seconds, you just will be number 99999 and nobody will see you. I encourage you to start your development from this point. Now we have, uh, we have server side rendering. We have uh, React, uh, React uh, effectively managed all client side uh, work with uh, virtual DOM. We have lazy loading. Now most of the ingredients are ready and uh, just unleash your creativity and create an excellent website. Thank you and bye.